let's take a look at how to draw Lewis structures. Um, I'm really going to be drawing these structures based off of formal charge, trying to reduce formal charges as much as possible, and if I have negative formal charges, keeping them on the more electronegative atoms. Um, so if you haven't seen the video about how to figure out formal charges, uh, then look at that first because that's a skill you're going to need. So I'm going to follow the step-by-step -step that you'll see in the left-hand corner that I kind of made up. And um, this is how I draw uh, my structures. So I'm going to use PO4, 3 minus as an example. Um, I'm going to put the odd man out in the middle, so the phosphorus is going to go in the middle. And to keep it in the middle, I'm going to put oxygens all around it to keep it as the central atom. And I'm going to start with single bonds. Now, again, when I'm drawing these, I'm trying to keep formal charges as close to zero as possible. Um, so if I look at phosphorus on the periodic table, it should own five valence electrons. In the structure, right now, I only gave it owning four. So I need to give it another electron. So I'm going to look at step two. It says look at the outside atoms to really guide if you're going to draw more bonds or more dots to give it more electrons. So I have oxygens on the outside. Oxygens typically form two bonds, um, so I can feel free to add more bonds on those oxygens as needed. If I have halogens, which is group 17, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, if I have those or hydrogen on the outside, I'm gonna stop at single bonds, and if I need any more electrons, I'll be adding them as dots, okay? But I have oxygens on the outside, so I can feel free to add more bonds. I can add double bonds. Um, phosphorus already owns four, so I just need one more, so I'm going to put one double bond. Um, so the phosphorus now has a formal charge of zero. Um, if I add in my extra electrons, and for your outside atoms, anytime you really have a single bond, you're going to be drawing six, and really almost anytime you have a double bond, you're going to be drawing four. Um, so now if I take a look, each of the oxygens that are singly bonded all of those should own eight, uh, six valence electrons, and they own actually seven in the structure. There's one more than it should have on each of those single bonded oxygens, so each of those have a minus one charge. And the one on the bottom that's doubly bonded, um, it has six in the structure that it owns. It owns one from each of those bonds, the other is sharing from the phosphorus, um, so it has a formal charge of zero. So if I notice that all of my um, negative one charges add up to minus three, which is the total charge on the whole structure, that's how I get that three minus. It's better for the minus ones to be on oxygens than phosphorus because oxygens are more electronegative. So this is a really good structure. This structure would actually have a resonance as well, so I'd actually have to draw four more structures because I could move that double bond onto any of the other oxygens. Okay, check out step four. My last step is to make sure I didn't give more than a total of eight valence electrons to atoms that are not exceptions to the octet rule. Um, only the third row and lower can have an expanded octet, meaning there could be more than eight total valence electrons around it because they would have d orbitals available. Because if I'm in the third row or lower, I'd be in the third energy or lower, which ha um, or higher, I should say, that which have d orbitals available. So if I check my central atom out, um, it's phosphorus, it's in the third row or lower, so it's okay that I actually gave it um, a total of uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 12, uh, 10 valence electrons that it actually um, are sharing. And that's okay if it were phosphorus. If it were something like nitrogen, something in the second row, I couldn't do that. I would have to get rid of one of those double bonds. Okay, let's look at XeCl4 and see how this one's um, to draw, how it's a little bit different. So put the odd man out in the middle, Xe, keep it in the middle, put your chlorines around it, start with single bonds only. Let's check Xe, how many it should own. It's in the noble gas columns. It has eight valence electrons, and right now I gave it owning only four of them because it only owns one from each of those bonds. So I need to get four more electrons around that Xe. Let's look at what's on the outside, which is step two. Look at your outside atom. You have halogens. Um, chlorine is a halogen, so I don't want to add any more bonds. I've got to keep single bonds. If I need to add any more electrons on that central atom, I'm going to have to add them as dots. So I'll have to add more dots. Again, Xe only owns four right now. We need it owning eight, so 
there we go, we'll have two pairs of electrons. Notice the difference. On the first drawing with PO4, 3 minus, I added more bonds because there were oxygens on the outside. In the second drawing, I'm adding more dots on the central atom because there were halogens or hydrogens on the outside. So I'm really using those outside atoms to guide whether I'm drawing more bonds or more dots on that central atom. Okay, complete your um, electrons on your outer atoms. Again, really, anytime you have a single bond, you're going to be drawing six dots around the outside ones, a double bond, four dots, a triple bond, three dots. And you'll notice that all your formal charges are zero here. Check that you did not expand the octet of something that shouldn't be expanded. Xe is in the third row or lower, so it is okay that there is a total of two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 total valence electrons around it, that is totally fine for Xe. If it were something like Ne in the middle, though that doesn't typically bond, um, or anything in the second row, I wouldn't be able to do that. Let's look at another two. Let's look at SO4 2 minus versus SCl4, and I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. Um, in each of them, you have a sulfur in the middle, and in the first one, you're going to have four oxygens around it. The second one, you're going to have four chlorines around it, and just put them in any order right now to keep your S in the middle. Start with single bonds. Um, let's look up S on our periodic table. It should have six valence electrons, and in each of the structures right now, it only owns four of them. So in each structure, I should try to get S to um, own two more valence electrons to get the formal charge down to zero. Notice in the first structure, there's oxygens on the outside. So to get two more valence electrons for sulfur, let's add double bonds because there's oxygens on the outside. I want to stop at two because now sulfur owns one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons, which it should have. The one on the right, there's chlorines on the outside. So I don't want to add any more valence electrons in the form of bonds. I want to add the two more that I need as dots to a lone pair. So now each of them have a formal charge of zero on that inside sulfur. Complete your octets really, or complete your valence electrons on the outside atoms. Again, really anytime I have a single bond on the outside atom, as long as it's not hydrogen, I'm really gonna be drawing six dots. And double bond two, uh, four, triple bond two, usually. Okay, and now let's look at if I have any formal charges. Um, notice in the first structure, um, each of the double bonded oxygens, they should own six, they do own six. The single bonded oxygens should own six, um, but in the structure I gave them seven, there's one more around it than they should. That's a minus one on each of those, and it adds up to the minus two, which should be on the whole structure. So don't forget to indicate your charge outside of brackets. Would that first structure have resonance? Yes, it would. I'd actually need to draw six total structures to show those double bonds rotated around onto each oxygen or each combination of oxygens because in actuality, the structure is a blend of all those six resonance structures. And the one on the right, chlorines should have seven valence electrons. I gave each chlorine seven valence electrons, so everything has zero formal charges, which adds up to a neutral zero charge on the whole structure. Let's just check if it was okay to expand the octet for S. Um, it is okay. It's in the third row or lower. So in the first structure, there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Um, there's actually 12 valence electrons around sulfur total if I count each bond as two because it is sharing an extra one from each bond. That's okay. And in the second structure, um, it has 10 valence electrons around it, and that's okay as well. Let's try two more structures to compare um, and use the step-by-step -step for the first one. Um, let's put the S in the middle. Let's put two oxygens around it, however you want to put them around it. Start with single bonds to keep them um, and keep the oxygens on the outside. In the first one, there's three oxygens, however you want to put them. Um, you could put all of them in a row for now. You don't really know what the geometry is. Um, start with single bonds. Um, so the first one, let's do the first one first. Um, sulfur owns six valence electrons or should own six valence electrons. Right now I gave it only owning 
two in the structure. So um, let's start by seeing can I add more bonds. There's oxygens on the outside, which typically do form two bonds, um, so let's give them double bonds. Now some people might say, hey, can I just add triple bonds onto the oxygens? So let's say I added triple bonds. For a triple bond, you would need two dots on each of the oxygens. And if I kept it like this, then each oxygen would own um, five valence electrons, one, two, three, four, five valence electrons. It would give it a plus one on an oxygen. Would I want to do that for something that's very elect uh, electronegative? No, I wouldn't want plus ones on an oxygen. If there are positive charges anywhere, it should be on the sulfur rather than an oxygen. This actually also doesn't have the right number of valence electrons um, either. It adds up to something that it adds up to a plus two, which is not what I have in this case. So I would want to end up um, just leaving double bonds, and if I now need more electrons, I can add them as dots. Now, when I add in my extra dots, there are zero um, formal charges on everything, which adds up to zero. And I've expanded the octet of the sulfur, but that's okay because sulfur's in the third row or lower. There's two, four, six, eight, ten total valence electrons around it. Now, if I look at O3, oxygen, the central atom, also owns six valence electrons, just like sulfur. So maybe I might say, hey, I can do the same thing as my other drawing. Now they have zeros everywhere and perfect drawing. But then you have to look at my last step. This is why I reminded you here. Do not expand the octet in something in the second row or lower. If you're in the second row, that means you're in the second energy level and you have only S and P orbitals available, which add up to eight valence electrons. So you don't have any room to have more than eight total valence electrons around it. And unfortunately, in this drawing, even though they all have zero formal charges, I gave two, four, six, eight, ten total valence electrons to oxygen which is not possible. Therefore, I'm going to have to amend my structure. Oh, that was pretty terrible. Um, <laughs> I am going to have to, let's get rid of one of these bonds, okay? I can leave my um, extra dots that I had on top of the oxygen. And now what I'll notice is this oxygen's a plus one, this oxygen's a minus one. The middle oxygen has one less than it should. It has five when it should have six. Um, the one on the outside to the right has seven when it should have six, but these do cancel out to be zero. So even though this has more formal charges, I am limited by the fact that I have something in the center that I cannot expand the octet of. So this was um, a pretty quick way of drawing, um, drawing Lewis structures. Feel free to use this step-by-step. -step. Um, practice is key. Keep doing lots of different structures and do them in pencil because sometimes you have to revise your structure to make a better one as you're checking it as you go with formal charges and as you're checking it to check for the octet rule. When you're doing formal charges, you're counting each bond as one. When you're checking for the octet rule, you're actually counting each bond as two because one it owns and the other it's sharing, um, but you're counting how many total valence electrons are around it.